Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And uh, Alex, uh, we are going to be going back to the well for a minute. The and... well? Are we drinking from it? Yeah, drank. Yeah, has we're drinking. Timmy, has Timmy fallen into it again? Oh, absolutely. Every single time. That's why we always bring Lassie along with us. Uh, we are going back to a subject that we tackled on, like, episode... I don't know, six about experience. Oh boy, we've got a wealth of that now. <laughs> I was going to say, we ourselves have accrued tons of experience, and uh, we have leveled up several times since the last time we ta really talked about this subject. Yeah, no, specifically what I wanted to talk about when it comes to experience, having now played games and, and gotten used to it, I wanted to to get your thoughts on some things. In basically every role-playing game that I have now played, like when I was doing the stuff with Open Legend, when I was uh, when I'm playing the games right now in 5e, every game that I've played except maybe when you were running me in that crypt that one time has worked not on experience points, but on milestones. We haven't been calculating experience points. In general, I really liked it because I felt like experience points were one of those really daunting things to keep track of to figure out when you level up. But the other problem that I'm finding is if you were building a system, I don't really see how you would do that without having experience points as part of your system. So I guess the first thing I wanted to ask you is when it comes down to tracking experience points or milestones, what do you prefer yourself? Honestly, I don't mind either. The last game I had, we did milestones, but we also did, like, goal setting. So you oh. could set, like, short-term goals, long-term goals, and those would help advance you as well. But milestones are, are great because they usually come at a story crossroads or a big event happening. So you level up as the story progresses, which is nice if you're doing that. Right. I also liked um, it just because all the players level up at the same time, typically. Which you generally tend to do with experience to a degree, mm. depending on how you hand out experience. But uh, Milestones is a lot less uh, tracking that e uh, experience, which is nice because you don't have to sit there and go, oh, well, I need another 4,000 XP to level. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, some people really like that. Right. Going, I'm so close to leveling, as opposed to, I have no idea when the next time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to level is, or when did I level last, for instance. You know, some people like the quantitative nature of seeing a number that they reach. Well, that's the whole reason levels are a thing. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I do like when my level goes up. I don't like it when my level goes down. <laughs> Usually your level only goes down to negative energy. Yep. The thing that I find interesting, so you were talking about goal setting, because I wanted to ask you about that. So is that like a system where you level up once you have achieved X number of things, or it's separate uh, from that? That was, that was like a homebrew thing okay. that David was doing with us, so it wasn't, I well, don't think, anything specific. Okay, but I mean, um, milestones was, are kind of homebrewed anyway. They, they were like, well, not exactly. I think they have a milestone thing in D&D 5e. They do? I oh. think so. Okay. Like, they might not. I could be wrong, but I believe there are rules for it. Okay. Like, at least, like, here's how to do this. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I figured that milestones just as a as a mechanic are not really easy to implement as a mechanic. They have to kind of be story-driven. Um, Because I, I don't know how you would quantify it. I Again, think. if you're going to do it as, like, an actual mechanic and not just story-driven, mm -hmm. then you'd have to have goals and specific, like, requirements for that as a party or as a story or as the player characters. But as right. you said, usually milestones, you all level up together. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. you wouldn't really have player-specific goals if you're trying to level up as a party. And I also just thought that for flow, 
it's kind of great because if you're in dungeons or you're in intense moments, you don't have to stop for a moment and say, well, now i got to figure out how much experience I got for destroying the monsters before. No, hold on. No, hold on. i got to figure this out. I Let's mean, you don't up. typically do that in the middle of a fight anyways. You do it like at the end of a fight or maybe at the end of a session. I would do it. Yeah. There's, <laughs> the there's second I get it, I need it. <laughs> But I also don't want to level up in the middle of a of a dungeon or a fight. No, I mean you can. Obviously, people can do level up at the in the middle of a game if they really want to. There's nothing right. saying you can't. Mm. But for game's sake, you should probably keep leveling up to after the session is over, or at the beginning of a session, or between sessions. Okay. Yeah um because it takes up a lot of time sometimes especially like in 3.5 leveling up was a was a feat itself (laughs) um in 5e it's a lot simpler for instance but in a lot of other systems it's not as simple like in the 40k systems from uh fantasy flight that they did Mm -hmm. it was oh i have all this experience i'm going to spend it now and now i have to look through all the book and see what i can spend it on what things i can take and what i can rank up and it's yeah. a lot to do if you're sitting at a table waiting to play a game. Like, as far as the leveling goes, uh, trying to figure that out in session is, uh, like, just going to kill your flow. <laughs> like, usually what happens in the game that we're, we've only leveled up a couple times in the 12 or 13 uh, sessions that we've done. But... Uh, when we do, Dom usually will just say, uh, oh, by the way, uh, you leveled up now that you're back to the manor or whatever, and so we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out just so everybody knows. And then when we come back the next session, we've all leveled up our characters. So we've done that between sessions. Right, because yeah. then you don't have to worry about doing it during the gameplay session. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, then it begs the what if someone has an issue they want to talk to the GM? Do you just, I suppose you would just message your your dungeon master? Right. He tried to make it uh, super convenient because uh, some of us, uh, not me, I I have my character on D&D Beyond, so all I really have to do is just uh, say that he's gone up a level and then uh, make the choices that you need to make for that next character model which I find incredibly useful. D&D Beyond is great for newbies because it streamlines the whole thing for you. 5e is is great for newbies because yeah. it streamlines the whole thing for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just glad that I know I'm not messing it up because the, the system told me that's what I'm supposed to do. I mean, you're, you're probably messing it up. I'm probably still messing it up. I mean, I made my character much, much weightier and taller than technically he should be by the D&D oh. handbook. But then again, he's supposed to be a mutant. So, as far as experience goes, I was trying to figure out when you're developing a system, which I am. Yes, yes, you are. Yeah, when you're developing a role playing system, as you are, do you think it's almost going to be necessary to have some kind of an experience system, even if you don't end up using it in the game? Well, that really depends on what you're trying to do with your system. Okay, uh, I know that's kind of a cop out answer. But I will hmm. elaborate on it, though. Good. So if you were to say, want to only have milestone leveling in your game, you could do that. There would be nothing stopping you from creating your game and doing that. Because you could just say, all right, pick your milestones and then, you know, make them big enough to make it feel warranted for the, mm. the dungeon masters to do that. So you're not really having a scale where XP is kind of a sliding scale of how far to the next level you are. Right. So you know where you're at. With just a milestone type of leveling, you wouldn't need that and it wouldn't be necessary. Right. But then you might have instances where people are like, well, how far till our next thing? And be like, oh, well, we're going to have to go to a major story point. And if people just kind of dick around for a while, they may not get there. So I think if you're going to have a milestone type leveling system you need to both have a a way to generate or figure out what your big milestones are that you'll level from story-wise but then you'll have to find something to do that's maybe off the main story things that players can do uh time spent 
doing activities like killing monsters, for instance, that would still help you level up in case you were to say, in case you wanted to like grind it a little, not really grind right. it, but if you wanted to go and, oh, well, we're not quite high enough level to go do this thing. That's our main mission. Mm. Maybe we should spend some time getting better geared to do so for you, instance you, you know what you could do is you could do like a rocky style montage and after the <laughs> montage that's your milestone <laughs> yeah. i don't know if mon i don't think montage is a is a thing but it, I mean, should, it be. should be now it should be i mean can you imagine how amazing that would be if it's like well this next thing that we want to do is for like characters that are like three or four levels higher than what you're at right now montage. And you just have like the, the, you just have the players like just illustrate like what your characters are doing in that montage, all of the training that they're doing so that you can get do, through. Do, <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. You just start, you start playing eye of the tiger. And then at the end, you're at the top of the steps and you're, you're 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 waving your hands in your air and, and you're you're good to go. I th I feel like there would have to be a, a veritable amount of time spent elapsed doing this montage to oh, yeah. make it worth it. Yeah, I imagine that like there's a whole thing where like several months have elapsed between the the time that we started this montage and the time that we finish. Right, um, and by the time that you're done with your montage, it's like oh, someone else already finished that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else already finished it, or the world has irrevocably changed. Sorry. So yeah, well, you were montaging dragons destroyed all of Skyrim. And that is a milestone, but the problem is, uh, there's nothing left to save. Sorry. There are no, there are no more miles. There are no more miles. You, you literally got stoned from the miles. Someone hit you in the head with a rock for all the miles oh, you went down. Um, uh, and that's how a total pebble knocked. <laughs> and back to episode, like, two. One. <laughs> one or two. Yeah, hey, you know what? It's worth it for milestones. Total milestone knockdown. I would imagine if you're building a milestone system as, like, your, your primary, uh, mechanic to, to level up and advance your character, that it's gonna have to be kind of a rules light system. It's gonna have to be more of a narrative system in order to do that. I mean, it doesn't have to be a narrative system to do it, but you're going to need to have story elements. It can't just be combat, combat, combat. Right. Unless your milestones are combat mi milestones. So it's like, oh, you have to go kill a dragon. It's like, hey, we killed a dragon. Yeah. You know, it has to be a big dragon, not a baby dragon. You're like, the oh. big, big dragon. Uh, if you're going to implement a milestone system into your game as your primary way of dealing with experience do you have to have sort of like a framework where you say okay the players and the gm beforehand determine what the next story plot point is going to be at which point the characters level up do you have to like lay I, that out i don't think you have to lay that out because it's usually based on the gm's decisions in the story like where would be appropriate for the things they're doing to level up. At the same time, you should be able to allow your players to say, hey, we've done a lot of things. We haven't leveled up in a while. Mm -hmm. And the GM should be able to go, oh, shit, you're right. You probably should have leveled up like three sessions ago. Because you fought like a horde of goblins, and you fought two manticores and that big dragon, and you did this and you did that. So it's kind of give and take where the GM can kind of go, all right, they should level up after they do this, but depending on, you know, how tough fights might be or how tough situations might be to do right. or how well things are solved and figured out and dealt with, um, mm -hmm. you can definitely have a little bit of leeway there, I think. So e either you can do that and have the players able to say, hey, we haven't really leveled up in the last, like, three months, or you make maybe minor milestone sections you can do. Mm -hmm. where reaching those gets you closer to a level. So if you reach a couple minor milestones, yeah. then you'll still level even if you haven't reached a major milestone. Oh, okay. If you're going to milestone, there should be major milestones, minor milestones, and then your players should be able to go, hey. <laughs> <laughs> like, like because... almost if you had like a list 
Like, like you, you, you were kind yeah, of like I mean, here, here you are could examples. Do that if you wanted to, it would yeah. almost be like having a list of things that award you experience, except right. without having a giant tracking of oh, you need nineteen thousand experience to level. We're going to count that out and divvy it up mathematically. It could be like, well, yeah. you accomplished like seven things on this list, and then you mm-hmm. level. Right, that that's what I'm thinking about. Like, if you gave just a list of examples, these are minor accomplishments. These are, these are major accomplishments that all factor into milestone. Um, you could conceivably do it that way. I mean, I I think that that still feels pretty mechanical, like in its implementation. There's a thought. I don't think I've seen that done. I can't say that I have. Uh, I can't think of any of the games that we've talked about or had people on on the show where that was a thing. That's all we can really say. I can't remember any games that we've discussed on the show so far. So I guess that's a good question, too, for anyone out there. If you do know a system, please let us know. We'd be very interested to know if that's been uh, implemented. Yes, tell us. Tell us in the comments. (laughs) Tell us in the comments. Hey, everyone, just a quick editor's note before we continue, because I'm sure there are a few people that are screaming right now, Nathan, Alex, there are milestone rules in D&D 5e. And looking it up, uh, actually, in the Dungeon Master's Guide, they do have a small section put aside for milestones. It is pretty bare bones, though, Uh, looking at it right now, uh, treating major milestones as hard encounters, minor milestones as easy encounters, and giving a few examples uh, of what those might be. So, yes, it is implemented in D&D 5e. We're aware of that now. It's not particularly fleshed out in the same way as the basic experience system. So if you know of any systems that have a much more detailed version of that, we would really like to know about it. Thank you. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Uh, The other thing that I was uh, wondering about when it comes to experience, and maybe the reason why I like Milestones But a question on just experience by itself, usually when it comes down to figuring out experience values, it's all pretty much based on combat, at least when I see, like, D&D. I feel like it kind of strikes a lot of players to say, well, in order to level up, I'm going to have to go and kill a bunch of things. And I really wish that there was more of of, of a system in place so that experience could be accrued by other means. See, here's the thing. With mm. D&D specifically, EXP by the numbers is awarded by challenge rating of monsters. Mm-hmm. Now, the reason there isn't a uh, specific system for gaining experience from roleplay and other activities is because those don't have specified challenge ratings. So say you are designing a role-playing encounter, and it's supposed to be a challenging encounter, say, like a CR4 for a challenge rating 4. You could take it, assign the uh, CR rating of that to your non-combat encounter in conflict, right? and then you could award the appropriate experience to do so. But there is not really a system in place there may be like kind of role play rules in there but it's not generally something you get as an actual system because role play is kind of arbitrary and there's no way to really uh, agitate role play right as well as there is combat the rules for combat are very clear where the rules for role play really come down to what you're saying and doing, and the skill checks you're making. Right. So maybe if you had a system for that where skill checks awarded a certain amount of XP. That's what I was just wondering. Like, But then how do you prevent players from abusing that? Right, because my initial thought was like when you need to make like a charisma check or a saving throw or something like that, beating those saving throws or whatever could award an amount of experience because it's moving your storyline like you're like you're actually debating somebody or you successfully intimidate someone and by doing so you get experience but uh you could conceivably see uh one of your players just go down to the the street urchins in the next town and just try to intimidate every single one of them once to see how much experience they could get 
<laughs> and I think that's the reason they don't do it is because, of course, you've heard of the term murder hoboing. Mm hmm. Where you just go and kill everything and everyone yeah. because, well, why not? They're not important to the story and plus they all award experience, right? Right, which is why I kind of figured uh, having some kind of an experience system that doesn't just reward direct conflict would be useful so it doesn't happen. But here's the thing, mm. Nathan. If yeah. we were to experienceify, as I'm going to coin that new phrase, okay. experienceify. Sounds good. If you're going to experienceify skill checks mm -hmm. based on passing them. Right. Then you're right. What is to stop your barbarian from going to every single street urchin and terrifying them? How much XP for terrifying the orphans today? <laughs> Where did he go off to? Oh, he went over to the orphanage. He's apparently telling them ghost stories. <laughs> like, how do you stop a player who goes, well, I can gain 6,000 XP a day. Yeah. <laughs> terrifying the townspeople with intimidate. Man. Or charming people or doing any of those social skill checks that you can do or just going out into nature and going, I want to investigate all these plants with my nature skill <laughs> and just sit there for three or four hours just making skill checks, examining every single leaf. That's true. I mean, like, yeah, that's like the you... problem with that. <laughs> yeah, like if you had like a um a botanist book. And so every entry of, like, a new plant that you get or something like that could award experience. So then you just yeah, go out into the woods and try to find every single species you possibly can. <laughs> right. And at that point, it's like, all right, well, we've just made a, a, a an experience grinding game. Horticult extreme horticulture, that's what it's called. There could also be negative consequences to that. Like, I'm guessing that if you go around and scare all the orphans, besides having a lucrative political career, I think that <laughs> I think that it's pretty obvious that you might end up in some pretty hot water with the rest of the town. See, here, here's an idea I just thought of now talking about this. If you wanted to do a system like that where skill checks gained you experience, a way you could build a system that did that and combat does experience as well is if you had your... Your non-combat and your combat award experience separately oh, into okay. different pools. Oh, okay. This actually, I think, yeah. is something that goes back sort of to the game I was designing, mm. where I had different skill sets for combat and non-combat, and they had their own skill points. Right. You could spend combat skill points on combat skills, and you could spend your non-combat skill points on non-combat skills. Your lores and your, your artisanal skills and all of that stuff. If you were to make it so that you could level up your social skills, mm -hmm. I'm calling them social, they're just sure. all non-combat, they're not all social. Right. And then you could also level up your combat abilities and that type of stuff. Yeah. You could do that. Mm -hmm. Because depending on how you capped it out, you could be like, yeah, well, I've gained five levels in my non-combat abilities, but I've only gained one level in my combat abilities. Right. So you could be really strong, not in a fight. But then once you get in a fight, you're like, because like I'm I'm thinking like if you had almost like if you had three different kinds of pools, like if you had the the pool that's specifically combat focused, and you had one that was like social, and then you had one that was like more of like agility or or stealthy kind of stuff because that's usually there's usually like those three when you I see mean that that would fall into either combat or non combat. I guess so. But I kind of like the idea if you had organized, if you were like organizing all of your skills into a few different sections and then doing things in those different sections leveled up that specific part of your character. So like if you if you keep doing things in combat related ways, you're probably going to get better at that and that particular part of your character will get leveled up. But the other things are going to be stagnant because you're not focusing on them. So you might be really at, at a bit of a detriment when you meet the regional governor because you've decided to handle everything by smacking things with a sword. And I mean, your you could social just skills. smack him with a sword. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you could. And chances are then all of his guards are going to smack you with a sword, though. So, so, you know, sometimes words do get you a lot further. I kind of think that that's an interesting system. It actually reminds me of like the in Elder Scrolls, where if you did something a lot of times, you'd yeah, level up specific skills. Really, it's really hard to implement something like that in tabletop because mm. there's Is a it? lot of bookkeeping. 
Well, that that would be the problem. And since I was just saying how much I like milestones, if you think just handling one pool of experience is problematic, wait till you try to do it for every single thing you do. <laughs> yeah. The, the problem with that would be it's, it would end up being a really crunchy system. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it would not be simplified. It no. would be like, hey, you like number crunching? Why not? Do, at that point, why not just have XP? Right. Yeah, I, I get that. Um, Because the only reason why that really works in video games is because all the numbers are behind the screen. That's all calculated. Generally, yes. They're all very uh, well book kept for you. Yeah, it's like I hit th something with a sword, game's already calculated it, so we don't have to think about it. If literally every time you killed something or did anything in the game, the game popped up with like a screen that said, okay, uh, note that you made this much experience on this thing, <laughs> I would get pretty tired of that. We'll make that game sometime. Yeah. It'll be bookkeeping hero. Did get the spreadsheet out, get the fanciest pants of all. <laughs> Probabilator! <laughs> Yay! Yeah, that's the reason why I like Milestones, is because then you don't have so much bookkeeping. I just kind of felt like, uh, in terms of trying to build a system, it would be hard to do it without having some sort of mechanic for it. Even if people are going to use milestones, like because I I think a lot of people do use milestones for like five e since since we were talking about that earlier, but I can't imagine D and D ever just saying yeah we're just going to go with that and we're going to drop an experience system altogether because then for most people just picking up the game how would they know uh, I no I don't think they'll ever do that. I mean if they wanted to simplify their experience system a bit to make it so it wasn't like weird numbers it would be great. Well they could technically uh reduce what those numbers were. Well they'd have to reduce everything along, uh, uh, around the board then. Right. But like if I, I'm I'm saying like if you reduce the amount of experience that you would need to level up but then you just reduce the numbers of experience gains for everything else yeah you you would have to yeah you like you'd a have magnitude to. of 10 but that would just that um, would mostly just be there to avoid saying that this monster gives you six thousand experience yeah, it would then give you 60 experience yeah it gives you 60 and we'll just take some zeros off of some things or you would do it like the uh, system from l5r that i played mm -hmm. where you gain like points of experience at a time like one two three four five whatever Oh, you don't gain a lot, but it doesn't take a lot, and you spend those points. Mm. So you can save them, and then you can spend them basically one for one to gain skills and abilities, increase skills and abilities. Yeah, the only thing that you have to remember is that if you're taking your system down by a magnitude of 10 or 100, every experience point then becomes so much more valuable. Even if everything else has gotten reduced down... Saying that I get, like, an experience point when I only need, like, 60 to level up rather than 6,000, that experience point has a lot more value to me. Yeah. Like, it, it's hard to mitigate that out. If I say I have five experience points and I needed 1,000, or I say I get, like, one experience point and I need, like, 10, that experience point is going to be worth a, a lot more than the five that I would have gotten in the other system. So it's something to consider. And maybe that's the reason why they end up with some fairly large numbers. Well, the other reason for the large numbers is because it follows a bell curve. Oh, okay. So if you if you plot the experience uh, required to level on a graph, Ooh. it'll follow a bell curve. Mm -hmm. It'll kind of be slow to start because you need like one then four then nine thousand yeah uh level three etc and it goes starts slowly and then as you get higher in level it just starts ramping up because the higher level you are the more challenging things can be for you and so the more experienced things are going to be worth exponential growth i've never liked that because it takes so long later on in game like the first five levels are pretty quick and then after that it's it really slows down i can i can see that uh maybe that's the reason why they don't level beyond like level 20 and in, fi in 5e no 5e after level 20 you're retired you're retired you're done you're a demigod at that point. Mm, not a demigod necessarily but your character's like yeah i'm done yeah then you retire and when you come back you've lost all those levels <laughs> and you have to start again
Then you just start as your child. You start as your child. Hey, it's Rogue Legacy again. The the best implementation of milestones that I saw, and it was really the the fundamental thing that I was working off of. Uh, it was like the example that I was given when I GM'd myself was uh, Adventure Zone because in the balance arc they did uh, they they were working on D and D five e. And what Griffin basically did with that was there were individual story arcs. And so you knew that, like, there's a mission. This is the thing that you're supposed to achieve. And once you achieve that, you come back here. So the characters don't really necessarily know what's going to happen when they get in there. They just know that there's, it, there's like, an artifact that they're supposed to recover at each one of those arcs. And once they've recovered it and the story has completed and they get back to the base, they would gain two levels. And so this would happen every single time. And so over like seven or eight arcs, they basically end up getting to level 20 or 18. I think it might have been 20 by the end. But spacing it out like that, like everyone involved was fully aware that, okay, this is the point, this is the time, I get those levels, and we're good. If you have the ability to do that and it's structured in that way, great. If you're not on specific missions, you know, for us it was mostly like when you got to certain uh, points in the story, you know, you just got to like, you got to the manor house, so that part of the story has concluded, so you gain a level. Yeah, that would that would just be milestone, uh, storytelling milestones. I just found it very interesting that so many times when I was playing in the one shots and in the in the campaign, no one was bothering to track experience and no one was thinking about it. I mean, in one shots, it's probably just because you'd never figure you're going to level up anyway. Yeah, you don't typically level up too much in one shots because you usually don't start at level one. But if I were coming back with that character in another scenario, um, I think, you know, they were saying like, well, he, he would be one more level higher if we came back and did another one. So it's like, oh, oh all right, that makes sense. I, I just found it really interesting that I, I couldn't really conceive of a way that the system itself would not have an experience system, uh, regardless of whether you end up utilizing it in your own game. Like you were saying, maybe the maybe the major and mile, minor milestone idea could be implemented pretty easily in its place, depending on the system you're making. Uh, definitely. I think that is definitely an option. It comes down to what you want the feeling to be right what's your focus because yeah. if you want people to be really excited about all the little gains of experience they get mm -hmm. or the big gains experience they get because numbers tend to excite people when they go up oh yeah yeah um, so if you want that then experience is uh, your golden ticket right there right so like you gain 600 experience you're like all oh, right yeah yeah so that that's one of those things that experience is good for you know even if it's not leveling up you're still like all right i'm closer to leveling where milestones doesn't give you that feeling because it's like, all right, I'm not getting a level, I'm not focused on it. So if you want your players to be focused on that, those little victories, those those victories feeling more important mm -hmm. because oh, it gets me closer to the level every time I hit kill another monster. Yeah, they get pumped over that. Yeah, you know, if you want that to be the the feeling, then you can definitely do that. One one other thought that I was just having is. If you supplanted the experience uh, numbers with something else, like like if you decided to like play a D and D or another system uh, in an economist mode, and you would level up based on how much gold you had accrued. Oh boy! Wouldn't that be <laughs> then, then? Then it's just like however you get that gold through combat, through stealth, or f from sneaking around and taking it from people. Then you would just have business the game. Yeah, you would just have business the game. It's ty it, uh, It's fantasy tycoon, Alex. It's the next installment in the tycoon franchise, fantasy tycoon. Actually, that's kind of like reality, right? The more money you have, you level up. Is that what happens? See, what you do then is you make it so that you have, the more money you have, yeah. the, you, you spend your money to level up. Oh, okay. So you gotta recruit the money, then spend the money. And then you have to accrue the money again. Of course, the, the plot hole here mm -hmm. is that you accrue your money, and depending on what you have to give it to and spend it on to level up, you could just rob them. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> you'd have to have, you'd almost have to have, like, the magical money pool that you have to throw your money into. Yeah, it would have to be something that destroys it or whatever. Yeah. It's like, throw this money in the wishing well. It'll yeah. be that, that, uh, the wish, the wishing portal, which is just garbage shoot. It's like, I'm going to throw myself in there. Ah. Mm. Rick and Morty. Well, you know what's funny is I was playing uh, Munchkin recently, and they actually have a mechanic in that which is very similar. Where like you can you have different pieces of equipment, and you might have pieces that you don't use. And if you can get, I think it's like a thousand gold worth of equipment, you can trade it in for a level. You you can do that, but that's different than like a typical RPG. Right, because it's really a board game. Because then you would just go, oh, you got a plus one flaming greatsword. And they're like, yeah, cool, I'm just gonna level up instead. <laughs> I'm gonna level up or I could keep the cool greatsword. I gotta tell you, know, you. That would actually be an interesting system if magic items equated to experience. Yeah, yeah. and Because you... then you'd have to weigh the options between good gear mm. or higher levels. Yeah, because then you would have to think to yourself, yeah, this stuff is great, but if I gave it up, my personal self could improve. Here we go. I thought of a great system for that. It's it's even though five E is a magic light for weapons and, and stuff, mm -hmm. they are a magic item light system because mm -hmm. they didn't because in three point five was really magic item heavy. Mm -hmm. and they lightened it a bit. If you wanted to make a system where you did that, what you would do is you would have magic items be experience gained. You would have to destroy the magic item to gain its magical essence to help you level up. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Almost like the magic then infuses into you. Yeah, you basically steal the magic. The magic weapons would be made from, like, life force, whatever you want to call it. Mana, life force, knowledge, yeah. arcane knowledge, whatever name you want to give it. Sure. You have to destroy it, and you get the value that was put into it. Right. And experience. Right. There you go. That would be a really interesting way to level. I kind of like that idea just because it means that in order to level up, you literally have to sacrifice something to do that. Yeah. That would be interesting. We're going we're gonna to make this system later. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to build so that. Nobody, nobody listening better fucking listen to that. La 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 la. <laughs> Tune that out. Whatever you just heard, don't even think about don't it. Don't even we're think about it. You guys later. You know, It'll be for our patrons. We'll make that system for you. <laughs> we're we're going to work on that for, if if you're on our Patreon, uh, we're working on that system right now for you. We'll, we'll say that. If anybody knows of that system, actually, don't tell me. I don't want to know if that system exists already. Yeah, Someone... we're, we're about to make it. We don't care. No. So, uh, so hey, you know what? There, those are some thoughts about experience, uh, and I'm glad that we got back to it because just knowing a lot more about it now, uh, it was s something that I wanted to flesh out more than we talked about it in the original because we really just kind of went over what experience was in the first time. Yeah, it's it. that thing that makes you level. It's a thing that makes you level up, which, you know, at some point I guess we're going to have to talk about leveling too because that's oh, that's, oh boy. that's a whole thing in itself. I feel like we went over leveling and I feel like we, I don't know, go listen to it later and tell me if we did a good job. <laughs> tell us if we did a good job with leveling. I can't remember if we did or not. It's been so long. <laughs> it feels like many moons ago. Literally many moons ago. Well, only one moon. Well, it's the ago. same moon, but, you know, if you consider, like, different phases of the moon is different. Anyway, uh, so, <laughs> so Alex, if uh, folks would like to learn about all the stuff we've done over those many, many moons that are still all the same moon, uh, where could they go? Somewhere with the time machine. Fair enough. Or they could go to delvcast.com. That's right. When you go over there, we have all of our shows and all of our articles over there uh, and all of our videos. So you can watch all of those and listen to all of those and look with your eyes. Enjoy all of those things. Uh, and uh, while you are there, do not forget to click on our Patreon banner. Uh, just a dollar a month will get you all of the extended episodes, the rough episodes, uh, some of the drafts that we've put out there, some special episodes gone back in our archives, and I've, I've pulled some, some audio that uh, is not available anywhere else. So all of that's available even at the $1 level. However, we would like to thank our Shiny Level patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth and Dominic Perry, for being... Uh, for being just extra shiny. They're extra shiny people. 
Also, make sure to follow us on our Facebook group and on Twitter. I am at Citanium. I am at EXP Limited, and the show is at Delve Podcast. And as always, you can find the show on iTunes, Google Play, now on Spotify as well. Uh, you can Rain. find us there uh, pretty much everywhere where uh, podcasts are not sold. It's <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's free. Cause it's free. That's why we have a Patreon. That's why we have the Patreon. <laughs> and and I, was, I was on Reddit this morning and someone was talking about ads on, on podcasts. And I was like, we don't have ads on our podcasts. Mm. And they're like, why not? You could make money. And I'm like, well, we don't really do it for the money. We don't feel like shoving ads down our listeners' throats for things they're not going to want. And also, uh, we, we really haven't had anyone approach us for ads. <laughs> There's the other thing. Um, I mean, we've, we've had some sponsors before and we've uh, had some partnerships that we've done. But in terms of like ads, sponsorships and partners, uh, we might have some fun, interesting sponsored messages in the future. We're looking into it. Ooh. So stay tuned. Ooh. Speaking of which, yeah, that's a that's a good. We'll make thing. sure they're fun. Oh yeah, and not just annoying. They're not, or just annoyingly fun. We're not. We don't know. We're gonna try. I mean, we're, we're annoyingly fun. Yeah, we're gonna make sure that it doesn't. We're not gonna puppy monkey baby you. Let's put it that way. That's not what we're going to do. I mean, if if you've ever listened to Orbital before... It's sort of like that. We'll make it interesting. It's going to be kind of We'll make of it like worth that. your entertainment value. Yeah. Kind of like, yeah, on Orbital where I come up with a fake commercial at the beginning of every episode. Except for, except for not fake. Well, maybe. We might have fake ones. Who you knows? don't know that. <laughs> Man, this is... Worth, worth trying to think of fun things to throw in the show occasionally. Yes. Some, uh, some, some other content for eagle-eared listeners to enjoy uh so or eagle-eyed well perhaps. but you're not looking at the show Shh. they might be wow <laughs> i got with your third eye until then uh i hope that your experience today has been enjoyable you see what i did there my experience today has been limited and so for all of us here at delve well the from the two of us here at delve thank you for joining us and we will see you next time goodbye bye-bye